Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of JoyBaking.com. Today we're going to make waffles. And as you can see here, waffles come in different sizes and different shapes, depending on what type of waffle maker you use. For example, this one is, I used what is called a Belgium waffle maker, and it's, you can see it's quite thick, and there's a large grid pattern, and that's on both the top and the bottom of the waffle, and really deep indentations as opposed to this one, which is, I would say it's like a regular or standard waffle maker, and it's quite thin, and the grid pattern is quite small, so you have small indentations. But the great part is it doesn't matter what type of waffle iron you use, you, you can use the same batter for it. So, a waffle batter is like a pancake batter. Very simple to make. You only need two bowls. No mixer is uh, involved here. One for the, you need one bowl for the wet ingredients, one for the dry, and that's it. So we'll start with the dry ingredients. In a large bowl, you will need one cup that's 130 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. And then I'm going to add just like a quarter teaspoon of salt. One and a half teaspoons, which is about five grams of baking powder. And I'm going to add about two tablespoons, 25 grams of granulated white sugar. If you want your uh, waffles a little less sweet, you could just um, add about one tablespoon, that's about 15 grams of sugar. So that's, that's it for our dry ingredients. And then for our wet. In a, uh, another bowl, I have one large egg. Now, have that at room temperature, and then I'm just going to use a wire whisk to break that up. Just lightly beat it. And then what I'm going to do is add one cup, that's 240 milliliters of milk. Now, you could use a whole milk, full fat, or you could use a reduced fat. I'm actually using a 2%. If you use a whole milk, obviously your waffles will be more rich tasting than if you use, say, a 1 or 2% reduced fat. And then, what I'm going to do is just kind of make a little well in the center here and just pour in my wet ingredients. And then, what I'm going to add to this is two tablespoons, 28 grams of melted butter. And melt your butter and then let it cool down to room temperature. You don't want it hot and add it to this. So just two tablespoons. And then I'm just going to whisk this together just gently. You could use a spatula, I'm just using my whisk. A few lumps is okay, just like with the pancake batter. Just wanna make sure all the flour is moistened and that looks good. So now what I'm gonna do is just let this sit while I heat up my um, waffle machine. Now, you can make, like I said, there is two types of, of waffle irons or machines, whatever you want to call it. There's the Belgian. And as you can see here, that has the large grids, like I showed you the waffle. And then you have a regular standard waffle and smaller grid. Now, with both of these, if you buy the newer type of uh, waffle machines, they tend to have a red and a green light. And that shows you when the uh, waffle iron has come to the heated up. Plus, it will tell you when your waffle is done, which is really great. And it also has the, uh, like a dial or some kind of thing where you can adjust how brown and dark you want the crust of the waffle, which is really handy. Now, when you buy, if you're buying a new waffle iron, try to buy one that's non-stick lot easier. Um, that way your waffles don't stick and cleanup is really easy. So either way, so I'm going to make, I think we'll make the, um, the Belgian waffle today. So what I'm going to do is 
turn on my machine and it usually takes maybe five minutes to heat up and when we come back we'll make waffles. So we're now ready to make our waffles. As you can see, the green light is on my machine. If, you're, if your uh, waffle iron does not have this feature, what you can do is just open it up, take a few uh, droplets of water and kind of sprinkle them on the surface and then they will kind of bounce around and then evaporate and that way you know it's hot enough. Now always read your manufacturer's instructions because that will tell you whether you need to oil or like grease your waffle iron or not. My uh, instructions tell me to do that. So you can either use a flavorless oil and brush the grids or an easy way, which I'm gonna use is just one of these nonstick sprays and just a light coating like that. And then again, depending on the size of your waffle iron, you can use different amounts of batter. Usually it's around a half a cup, 120 milliliters, again, you. You know, either the instructions will tell, tell you or you'll just have trial and error. So just open it up and then I need, for mine anyways, about a half a cup, 120 milliliters for each waffle because this one makes two waffles. And then just put it into the center. And what you want to do is cover the grids normally, but you don't want to too much that it overflows. And that'll make a mess, which we don't want. So just slowly pour, just let it run, maybe a little more. And then you can take either the back of a spoon or I've got an offset spatula here to just spread it out. So you can see I want to make sure all the grids are covered with the batter. So what I'm going to do here is just kind of Sure, it's nice and even. Sometimes you have to experiment a bit to get to know what the optimum amount is. So now that looks good. Just close it up. Now you will notice as your waffles cook, there's going to be lots of steam coming out. And normally it takes maybe three to five minutes, depending on your waffle machine. Again, I have a light that actually tells me, so I don't have to guess. If, you're, if you don't have that feature, it normally, like I said, three to five minutes. Now, don't open your waffle maker in the first, say, two minutes, because otherwise you're going to make a mess. And then after that, you can maybe take a little peek and see when your waffle is done. Okay, our green light. Ah, so there we have it. Looks good. Now I'm using actually waffle tongs, kind of a cool little thing. You can just use regular tongs. You could even just maybe use a fork, transfer it. And then if you're making more, I just like to let my um, waffle iron heat up like maybe a minute because it cools down as you make a waffle. Now, it, as you noticed, I put it on a wire rack. If you're not serving it like immediately onto your plate, put it on a wire rack and that way there's air so that the bottom of your waffle doesn't get soggy. And if you want to hold them a little longer, you can put them in a 200 degree Fahrenheit, which is about 95 degrees Celsius oven, and put the waffle right on your, uh, the rack, your wire rack. Don't put it on a baking sheet because again, that will make it soggy. So. And I'm going to, so I'm going to serve it as with all like a pancake. You have a, a good side and a bad side. I think this side's better. And how do you, I mean, to dress, there's so many ways to eat waffles. For breakfast, my favorite, I must say, is I like a little butter. If you're being good, you won't have butter, but I like the butter. And I like maple syrup. But you can have honey. You can have, like, I have some raspberry jam. I have um, fresh berries. Blueberries is very nice. I also have a blueberry sauce. If you want to kind of, you're serving it for brunch, you could even have my favorite little blueberry sauce with some whipped cream. But for breakfast, this is my favorite way. And I like the Belgian waffle because it has those deep indentations, which really hold lots of uh, maple syrup. So let's give it a try. Very good. 
I, what I like about waffles is they have that nice crisp outside. And as you can see, I like mine fairly dark. And you, uh, most waffle irons, you can adjust that. But yet inside, they're just so soft and tender. I mean, excellent. Now, this recipe makes, like I said, like I figured maybe two hungry adults. So you could double it if you wanted. And if, say, you're only one person and you had extra, don't throw them away. What you can do is, once they've completely cooled, wrap them in plastic, put them in the freezer bag, and you put them in your freezer for about a month. And then all you need to do is to reheat them, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 180 degrees Celsius, and then just put your waffle right on the oven rack and heat them up, maybe frozen, don't, do, don't defrost them, um, cook them maybe five, ten minutes, depending on whether you're, you know, you're making the Belgium waffle, which is thicker than the other ones that are very thin, just until they're heated through. Delicious. Great way to start the day. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.